Hi everyone, my name is Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my 26 week pregnancy update. Now I know this is a little soon to be doing another update because I just did a 25 week update, but I just went to my midwife appointment and there is some new information that really changes some stuff I talked about in my last update. So I just wanted to update you guys and let you know what's been going on with me since there is actually some new stuff to talk about. So let's get right into this video. So this week Demetrius is as long as a zucchini. He's just getting so big, it's crazy how much he kicks and jumps around, especially at night. It was so funny because me and Luke were watching a show last night after Sylvia went to bed and it felt like he was kicking one side of my stomach and he was ramming his head against the other side of my stomach and it was just, it was the funniest feeling and he was just like going at it like 100 miles an hour like crazy crazy man like someone had given him caffeine and it was so much fun to feel. I now weigh 177 pounds so I've gained 37 pounds so only a little bit more than my last pregnancy update. Actually a few days ago when I went to my midwife appointment I weighed 178 but that could have just been that I ate more food that day or something so as I said I went to my midwife appointment and because I've been having all these pelvic floor problems and just like feeling like it's so swollen down there and like he's just gonna like fall out, I actually had her do a vaginal exam, which I've never ever had a vaginal exam during either of my pregnancies. Like the only vaginal exam I had with Sophia was when I was in labor and she was seeing how dilated I was. Like I've never like felt the need to, you know, have that checked. I just know I'm in tune with my body, I know if something feels wrong, and so just because of how uncomfortable I am, I decided to have her check just in case it was something else, and I'm actually very, very glad I did because it, it wasn't a weak pelvic floor. She actually said that my muscle tone looks really great for having back-to-back -back pregnancies, which I felt really good about, but she said that the thing that's causing the problem are varicose veins, which is crazy. I, I would have like never thought of that, but it totally makes sense because when it feels swollen down there it feels like lumpy like weird lumpy veins <laughs> so this might be TMI for some of you but this is pregnancy and and I'm real here on this channel so so that's a relief that it's not a muscle problem and that all these exercises I'm doing are really helping to, to strengthen down there again with having pregnancies so close and even just in general like even if I didn't have close pregnancies it's, it's good to do those exercises that I've been doing which are just like kegels and squats mostly and then walking like I'm walking around the house pretty much all day. So varicose veins are just hereditary. I get them from my mom and my grandma. I just would have never thought that they could be there like I thought varicose veins were just on your legs and your feet so it was kind of surprising that you can get them there. I guess my midwife said that the only reason I haven't got them, gotten them on my legs yet is because I'm so young, probably in my mid to late 20s, they'll start showing up on my legs just because they're hereditary and pregnancy, I think, makes them worse. So I am feeling very relieved, surprisingly, just because I know that it's just varicose veins and it's just something that I have that I'm going to have to deal with and it's not a problem with my muscle tone or anything that was damaged from Sophia's labor. She said I actually healed really well from Sophia's birth, so I'm really happy about that because I had to get stitches, and so I'm, I'm glad it all healed properly. So she said there was some irritation down there just because when it's swollen, like things rub against each other, I'm sorry, <laughs> but she said the best way to, to handle the discomfort and swelling and irritation and all that is to ice it. And it was funny because the night before I went to the midwife, I actually decided to try icing it and it felt so good. Like you know if something is really uncomfortable down there when ice feels good on your lady bits. Like there's seriously something wrong with it down there when that feels good. So I've been trying to ice it at least every evening and if during the day I've just been walking too much and I need to sit down, I'll try to ice it then and it has really been helping take the swelling down and just like make it not feel so like something's gonna fall out. So yeah, I think that's all she said about the varicose veins, but it's, it's really nice to know like for sure, for sure what's going on and not just be like trying to guess and self-diagnose things. So I am, I'm glad I had her check. She also said that about my placenta being low, I talked about this in one of my previous updates. I think it was the one that I did the gender reveal. I talked about how my placenta is kind of low, a little bit close to my cervix. And so she was saying that if I could get another ultrasound around I think she said 34 weeks just to make sure that it is like 10 centimeters up away from my cervix so that if I start bleeding during the birth she can at least know that she can rule that thing out 
So I probably will go get one more ultrasound even though I wasn't going to and I don't like getting a bunch of ultrasounds. Like one is like a little iffy for me even, but it would be really nice to know what we're dealing with during the birth and if there's if there's any issues that she can like rule out that at least that one big thing. So it, it would just make us all feel more comfortable with having a home birth. I also wanted to talk a little bit about all the supplements and herbs and things I'm taking in case you guys are curious. Now I agree that it's like really best to try to keep your vitamin levels and everything evened out just through diet and just having the right nutrition in your diet and eating a very well-rounded diet and eating more of something that's high in iron when you're low in iron. So I, I am all for managing vitamin levels with diet, but we eat a really healthy diet and even so, I during pregnancy, I find that I feel so much better when I take these supplements. My energy levels are just way up. I can tell a huge difference. So for me, I feel that I do kind of need to take some supplements and I can tell my body's like really craving them. I try to listen to my body. If, if I have a few days where I just forget to take my vitamins and my body's not craving them, I can kind of tell that I just probably didn't really need them that day. And I just kind of listen to my body. But most days, I like totally remember to take my supplements because I, I could tell my body like needs them. The first one is a prenatal and this is baby and me multivitamin innate prenatal and postnatal support. So I'll continue to take this after the baby's born for probably the first year I'm breastfeeding just because it's really great um, breastfeeding support and all that because you're using up a lot more of your own nutrients producing breast milk and I just think it's great to make sure that they're very well replenished. So this is my favorite prenatal vitamin I found. I used to take the Pure Encapsulations brand, and then when I switched to this during this pregnancy, I like I could totally tell a difference in like my energy. It was crazy. I absolutely love this brand, but this is a really great prenatal because it's like a really high quality one. So I highly recommend this one. The next thing that I take, and I I took this with Sophia's pregnancy too, and throughout the entire time I was breastfeeding her is this fermented cod liver oil and concentrated butter oil. This is amazing stuff. I'm trying to make sure that all my body reserves are very well like supplied with like healthy oils and stuff like this so that even though I had back to back pregnancies, I will still have enough body reserves to breastfeed and to continue to have lots of kids and you know, I just want to make sure my body's like very well stocked up on all these really awesome things. So I love this fermented cod liver oil, which sounds really weird, but it doesn't taste like cod liver oil because it's actually flavored with cinnamon. So you can't really tell that it's cod liver oil. It's, it's really good. And then I also take a fish oil capsule. I take one of these every day. And this is just kind of for the same purpose, just really healthy. And I definitely feel more energetic when I take both the cod liver oil and the fish oil. And again, I'm trying to build up my reserves for breastfeeding and those are two really great things to do that. I think that like oils, like healthy oils and fats and like things like that are some of the best things for breastfeeding. And I know a lot of breastfeeding moms eat, eat a lot of nuts like almonds and different things like that because they have a lot of oils in them. Then I also take a vitamin D supplement because here in Montana, especially in the winter, we don't get a ton of sun exposure, and so I definitely am low on my vitamin D levels a lot, so I definitely try to take this while I'm pregnant and breastfeeding. And when you're low in your vitamin D levels, you feel so tired, it's like crazy. Then I also take this Calm Magnesium drink, and this stuff is amazing. Like, out of all of this stuff, I can tell the biggest difference with this with my muscle cramps. Like, with this pregnancy, I have gotten the worst muscle cramps. Like in my legs, I get these round ligament cramps that just like go forever. Like I get terrible cramps in my shoulders and my arms. Like if I'm trying to hold Sophia and like do something with my arm, my shoulder cramps up and then I'm like stuck in a position for a while and it's ridiculous. <laughs> but if I remember to take this every day, that doesn't happen. Like I have zero cramps when I remember to take this. So it's really amazing. It also helps with my joint pain. I've been having a lot more joint pain with this pregnancy. And so this just helps so so much with both of those things so i i highly recommend this stuff i love it so much it's like crazy how much it helps then i also have this curcumin supplement this is turmeric and ginger and both of those things are just super healthy my midwife actually told me to that i should take this just for my thyroid support i have hyperthyroid and it actually goes lower during pregnancy but it just helps kind of regulate your body systems and both turmeric and ginger are just super healthy for you so I really like taking this one. And then I've also been taking a vitamin C supplement just because it is fall and I'm just trying to make sure that we don't get sick because I do not want to get sick. But generally even if it's not like 
a cold or flu season, I take one of these every day just because it's just really healthy for you. And then I take my herbal pregnancy tea every day. I actually have a video on how to make this. I'll link the video up in the cards and in the description box below. But this is just really, really great for pregnancy for like different things like thyroid support and bringing different vitamin levels up and toning your uterus, getting it ready for labor. If one of the herbs brings up your vitamin K levels so that you're less likely to hemorrhage during labor because your blood actually clots properly. There's just like a ton of great things about this tea that I, I try my best to remember to take this every day. And then besides all those supplements, I just try to make sure that I have a lot of probiotics in my diet, like just good natural food probiotics like sauerkraut and homemade yogurt and kombucha and kefir. And then I also try to remember to, to drink bone broth every day because that is just so healing for your gut and it boosts your immune system. And then also we take elderberry syrup every day and that's mostly because it is fall and I'm actually surprised that we haven't gotten sick yet. But I think it's partly because we've been taking this elderberry syrup every day. I actually, I have a video recipe on that too. I'll link it for you guys if you're interested. But I make elderberry syrup for us and you can use raw local honey in it which just makes it like even better. And so like with all of these things that I'm taking, I've been feeling like really, really good. And I can definitely tell a difference in like my energy and my, even my mood and all this stuff. And my, my thyroid's been doing way better when I remember to take all these things. And so I'm not telling you that you have to, you know, take these specific supplements. I'm not a doctor or anything. I'm just telling you what I take. And all of these things have been like verified and recommended by both my midwife and my naturopath. And so I feel really confident that this is like a really well-rounded like nutrition for the baby for while he's growing inside of me and for also afterwards while he's breastfeeding. So I just wanted to share that with you guys if you were interested in like what supplements I'm taking. So now I'll show you guys the bump. Here's the bump. I'm feeling really big lately and it almost feels like he has come up a bit. I can feel him actually up here now when normally he's like way down here, but I don't know. He'll probably just move back down. Again, he just likes to move around. He's very busy. So definitely feeling pretty big, but I know that this is going to get way bigger. So that's all for this pregnancy update. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!